Welcome, citizens, to Liberty Tales from the Tower. As your media director, it is my privilege to inform you that the following stories will contain content some listeners will certainly find disturbing. <laughs> Citizens, we now have an update from the Division of Development and Sustainability regarding the black cloud seen on the southern horizon. A dense mixture of volcanic tephra ejected during a subterranean volcanic event caused by the tectonic movement. Simply put, the Black Cloud is a blooming collection of volcanic ash and spewed gases. Due to the continued existence of the cloud, the eruption is considered mild but ongoing. Having reached a distant surveillance relay, the Division has determined the cloud to be incredibly toxic, with dense concentrations of carbon dioxide and hydrogen sulfide. Additionally, the ash is comprised mostly of small particles of volcanic glass, <laughs> particularly dangerous to inhale or expose to the eyes. Given the current state of our atmospheric containment field, citizens are assured the cloud will not harm Atreus, were it ever to reach us. We'd like to take a moment to thank citizens Dax Havrilak, Zach Israel, Daniel Uchwool, and Austin Barth for their continued support during this season, as we are now nearly to its end. That's right, we very nearly survived our second season. Deep in Sleep will be our final tale. However, it's a two-part story written by Caitlin Statz. So, let us visit the section for disorders and disabilities for a sleep study. With this final gesture, we place this year's graduating class's tile into the wall, helping to build a better, stronger Atreus for us all. May your skills and talents bring you a prosperous and happy life, and may the Archon watch over you. Graduation went by so quickly, a blur of happy faces and cheers. When that tile went up on the wall, and I looked back at my mother's, I already dwelled on the things to come. My name was in the database now. A registered nurse seeking out her first apprenticeship. I'd scanned the catalogs for many nights before graduation, mulling over what track to take with my life. I thought about the people I could help, the happiness I would bring my family, how I could better Atreus. Beaming with maternal joy, my mothers took me out for celebratory drinks after graduation. It was a popular cafe, and my absolute favorite place with a drink and atmosphere I always raved about. Which, I'm sure they knew. The culmination of a wonderful day. We are so proud of you. Oh, time seems to move so quickly with you, Tia. You were just hugging my hip yesterday. That was ten years ago. Don't remind me. Let's just go back in time, you do your cute little giggles, and me without these laugh lines. You still look beautiful, dear. Now the easy part is over, though. Don't undervalue your struggles. Tia, you worked hard every day for your degree. Oh, but she is right, Claudia. Her basic training is over, she has her certification, and now it's on to an apprenticeship. And then a career. And then a family. You're too far ahead of time now, Mother. Slow down. Well, then how about that apprenticeship selection? The catalog is rather extensive this year for new graduates in the medical field. It is. I've spent a few nights looking it over. And? Oh, if you know, you must tell us. Do you know where you'd like to apply? Remember, it's always advantageous to have multiple selections. Many of the apprenticeship positions are very competitive. I know, Mom. I've made a few choices. I've even prepped the applications. Oh, I knew you would. Maybe not top of your class, but certainly prepared. Thanks. What she means is, it is so nice to hear you have things figured out already. So, what were your choices? Well, 
My second backup is the physical therapy ward, working with CDF officers, elderly, people who need help improving or re-establishing their quality of life. My primary backup is the local childcare facility. Oh, you would love that. You adore kids. Yes, but that position is very competitive as they only have two open spots this year. I have some solid recommendations, but I certainly will not leave it to just that. So, your first choice? The section for disorders and disabilities has opened up a few new apprenticeship spots to fill the need for aid in their newest studies. They are working to help people with a variety of disorders through therapies, new drug trials, and so much more. I feel I can make a difference there. Help people. I know you will. Now, how about a gift? It ended up being such a wonderful day. They showered me with gifts, affection, and confetti. After our drinks, we went to walk in the park, meeting up with my half-brother Torius during his shift break. It turned into more of a celebration than any birthday in my memory. Turning another year older happens to most and is no real achievement. But the pride my family felt for my graduation was palpable. The coming days were the most relaxed I'd been in years. The deadline for the apprenticeship applications was not for a few days after graduation, but I'd already sent mine in. After the deadline, a few days were expected to hear back. I cleaned my apartment top to bottom, met with my family as time allowed, and my partner Corin and I went on a few celebratory outings. I received a message on my datapad one night when we were out to dinner. So, then I went to the director's office to see what Maria had been going on about, and... Corin, Corin, I just got a message. Is it them? I don't know. I haven't checked it yet. Why not? I didn't want to be rude. You were talking. Open it. The anticipation. It's from them. The section for disorders and disabilities. And did you get it? Tia? I did. I got it. I was so happy I went still for a while. Corin ordered drinks and made an embarrassing fuss, but the waitress was understanding and even presented us with a free dessert. I sat with the data pad open on the table, the bright light shining up into my eyes like a beacon beckoning me to my future. I started next week. The next few days were a blur of preparation, purchasing and fitting my new uniform, updating my data, and receiving the dossier on the specific study I would be assisting in. It was confidential, so even though my mother's, siblings, and partner begged to know what I'd be working on, I didn't say a word. My happy, sly smile told them I was content, and that seemed to suffice. I had an orientation session with several other apprentice nurses and on-staff nurses under the lead of the project's head, Dr. Vita Kwa. It was brief, but we updated our marks for security clearance before Dr. Kwa began her talk. Now that everyone is checked in, we'll begin. We have two new apprentice nurses starting with us on the project. It's their first week with the Section for Disorders and Disabilities, and we're happy to have you. Now, down to the task at hand. We are starting the volunteer trials for an inhalable drug to help combat an array of sleeping disorders. I'm sure most of you have read the dossier by now, so I won't be going into detail, but you'll be receiving some volunteer audio files if you'd like to better understand the array we are working with. What is the study's projected sample size? We're starting with 160 volunteer participants. This includes both those afflicted and our control group with no previously documented sleep issues. Now, as I was saying, you will be able to listen to some of the intake audio if you like. All the files have been run through voice scramblers to keep the study blind. Yes? Hello, I'm Tia, the new apprentice nurse. Where did the volunteers learn about this study? I didn't see it in the dossier. All of our volunteers chose to participate for community service hours. All the volunteers are low to mid-level offenders who were given an allocation of community service hours. They could choose to volunteer for the study or partake in other community service activities. Hearing they would be receiving community service just for sleeping led to quite the rush of volunteers. Now, Tia, as the apprentice nurse, I'm afraid you and your new fellow will be working the night shift. So stock up on caffeine. Actually, a free caffeine dispenser is already in the nurse's station in the sleep lab. Well, there you go then. You, Tia, and you... Agrippa, doctor. 
You, Tia, and your fellow apprentice Agrippa will be meeting with me tomorrow evening to begin the study. I'll arrive an hour after you, as you will be responsible for checking patients in and setting up the monitors. And for us? The day nurses will be assessing all the monitor data from the previous night's sleep study and examining the comments and entries left by our volunteer participants to help ascertain any possible side effects. Oh, great. What? Did you think you had it easy? Now, everyone has received their additional personal files with access links, schedules, and the rest. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to message the project coordinator, Laurentina Ramirez. Her contact information is available in the dossier. Thank you for coming. You are all dismissed. And I will see the new apprentices tomorrow evening. Hello. Uh, Tia? Yes. Sounds like we will be working together, Agrippa. Yeah, I was not expecting to start a whole study of all-nighters. After the overly relaxed week I've had, it will certainly be a 180. I have been so lazy since graduation. Are you from this district? I don't remember you from courses. What shift were you? District 5. Second shift, with an elective in fourth. Third, with an elective in second. Was the section for disorders and disabilities your first choice? No, but I'm still happy to be here. The section helped my grandfather years ago, and, and it's always been near the top of my list. What was your first choice, if you don't mind me asking? I wanted to work with Veterans Affairs, but it was intensely competitive this year. Was this your first choice? It was. I want a career that helps as many people as possible, and I think this is where I can contribute and benefit the most. I am so sorry, and I don't want to be rude, but I need to leave to catch the sky rail. No, sorry. Not a problem. We'll see you tomorrow evening. Archon watch over you. You too. I had downloaded a lot of the preliminary files to my datapad days before the meeting. The files included hundreds of audio files, patient charts, drug information, and much more. Thankfully, Project Coordinator Ramirez and her team had taken the time to listen to hours of intake interviews and set aside a file deemed primary example of extreme sleep disorders within the volunteer subset. Within, I found several audio files with redacted names and assigned numbers. The sleep disorders varied greatly. Insomniacs, varieties of hypersomnia, including narcolepsy and cataplexy in some cases, parasomniacs, including sleepwalkers, night terror sufferers, and more. Examples of periodic limb movement disorder, PLMD, rapid eye movement sleep behavior disorder, RBD, sleep paralysis, and even somnophobia. Additionally, there was intake audio from the control group who reported no known sleep issues. Of those audio files, I began listening to some demarcated by the project coordinator on my ride home. Please remember that the voices have been disguised for the sake of the study and volunteer privacy. The first file was labeled intake underscore zero one two. Please don't mention your name or other names during the interview as we would like to keep these interviews blind and confidential to those working on the study. Now, please tell us about your sleep disorder experiences. I... I have insomnia. Please expand. I have acute insomnia, sometimes chronic. I can try and try to get some sleep. It, it will never work. It's normal for me to get about four or less half-hour sections of sleep a day. I'm always tired. My vision gets fuzzy sometimes. There are hours where I'll just stare at the wall. Hours and hours. But sleep never comes. It feels so unobtainable. But I, I take drugs for it now. Sleep pills to help me get a few hours of sleep a night. Four tops. I'm still tired, but now my life is so much better than it was before. I have to stop taking my pills for the study, right? Yes, for its duration. But the study is supposed to help, right? And I get my community service hours for it? Yes. Well, it's a bit scary going off the pills. A few times when I'd gone weeks with so little sleep, I would see things. I... I... I guess they were hallucinations. Sometimes simple things, like a broadcast coming on or hearing things that were not happening, but then... Also scary things, like people staring at me. Or one time, I was lying in bed trying to sleep. And suddenly I was falling. 
as though from atop a tower. Can I be done now? This was only the first, with some of the most advanced symptoms of chronic insomnia. Seating on the sky rail and awaiting my stop, I played the next audio file. Please don't mention your name or the names of others during this recording, as we would like to keep these interviews blind and confidential. Now please tell us about your sleep disorder experiences. I have something called rapid eye movement sleep behavior disorder. It is a subset of parasomnia. I've had it since I was a young teenager. Came about with puberty, I guess. It means I do what I do in my dreams, but, you know, with my whole body in reality. If I'm running, my legs are kicking. If I'm screaming and lashing out, I'm doing the same thing here. I have one of the worst cases ever heard of. Four years ago, in a fit of fear, due to a nightmare, I was responsible for the unknown manslaughter of my wife, Vasia. I was asleep in a nightmare, a nightmare I can't even remember fully now. But something was coming for me. So I reached out for a weapon and... When I woke up, I was covered in Vasia's blood. She'd always been there, to try and calm me. We didn't even share a bed anymore, since I'd always lash out. But if she heard me screaming, she would have come running. How often do you dream? Dream or have nightmares? Both. I dream almost every night. Nightmares maybe two, three times a week. Nowadays I strap myself in before I go to sleep. Tight. I wake up with bruises, rashes from the straps, little ruptured blood vessels. Nightmares are... The nightmares are along the same lines. Like someone is outside my apartment trying to get in. It is so frightening. And sometimes they do. And it's some nightmarish person, figure, coming at me. I don't know. It's a dream. And, like... Even the positive ones, they start to fade. Yeah. I would like to stop here. I was off the sky rail and down the elevator walking to my tower when it finished. I was frightened at first. The idea of working with a murderer. Overwhelmed with regret, I apologized internally. Certainly this person was racked with guilt over the accidental killing of the person they loved the most in the world. They carried that burden throughout their life, and I had no experience valid enough to enforce a judgment. Pausing in the street, I hit play on the next file. Hello. Hello, ma'am. Uh... During the course of the recording, please don't mention your name or the names of others. We will keep these interviews blind and confidential to those professional in the study. Now, please tell us about your sleep disorder experiences. I have uh, reoccurring night terrors. I developed the... I developed this disorder in tandem with my post-traumatic stress disorder, uh, following my time in the war. It has been about 50 years. Uh, waking up in sweats and screams has been my normal for longer than you've been alive. Is the content of your night terrors associated with memories from the war? At times. <clears throat> it's difficult to remember them all clearly, but uh, some certainly are. Some are just memories, but with certain nightmarish additions. Others are more abstract. Sometimes there's fire or man on fire chasing me. Other times, I remember nothing at all. Anything else you'd like to add? If this trial helps, will it be something implemented in my lifetime? I'd be happy knowing others in the future won't need to struggle through what I have. Uh, but it would be nice to get some real sleep. Well, I apologize, but um, I'm not able to make such decisions. I'm just an intake nurse. No apology needed, ma'am. Do you need anything else from me? No. No, you're, you're free to go. 
I was home now, sliding into the dark of my apartment and taking off my coat. Pressing my privacy hood to my ears, I heard the end of the track and tapped to start another as I sat down for a meal. Please take a seat. Now, during the course of the interview recording, do not mention your name or the names of others. We will keep these interviews blind and confidential. Only those working within the study will hear them now. Please tell us about your sleep disorder experiences. I sleepwalk. Dangerously. It is not on purpose or anything, but when I sleep, my body just gets up and walks around. Lots of people have it. It is not usually a problem. My brother had it when we were little, but uh, he grew out of it fast. I got my disorder when I was about 16. What makes your sleepwalking, as you said, dangerous? My walking body takes me to dangerous places. It maybe happens once a week or so, but my body tries to kill me. It will walk me to the sky rail and put me at risk of falling onto the tracks. Or it will sleepwalk me onto the rooftop garden of my apartment. And I'll wake up standing on the edge looking down 40 stories to the streets below. Then there's the whole reason I ended up here. Sleepwalked right up to the wall. Tried to get out into the no man's zone. Thankfully, my disorder's on file and the guard on duty could tell I was sleepwalking. Could have gotten arrested. Got these community service hours instead. How do you feel after a sleepwalking night? Feel. Well, I wake up in a terrifying position, so that's not an overtly positive feeling. But yes, I wake up feeling rested, if that's what you meant. It's really unfair that I even have this. My brother got rid of his so young. I'm the only adult I know who has sleepwalking that reoccurs at all. Every time I try to tell a friend about it, they think that their one time sleepwalking across their apartment compares to what I go through. This study, cure, thing better work. I'm ready to be done with this. Are you done? I mean, sure. Not much else to say. I'd never imagined the myriad of ways sleep disorders could impact someone's quality of life. The amount of this covered in my courses was minimal. Just a few pages to read, a lecture, and a handful of questions on an exam. I looked down at the data pad and saw two remaining files in the queue. It was already late, and I wanted to go over several more files before tomorrow, so knowing the end was near pushed me onward. I cracked open my meal and tapped play. Please take a seat. Please don't mention your name or the names of others during the recording. We will keep these interviews blind and confidential. Now, uh, please tell us about your sleep disorder experience. Confidential? Everyone knows who I am. It was on all the news broadcasts. Well, that may be true. We would like to treat everyone as equally as possible for the study, so... Sure, whatever. I have hypersomnia, narcolepsy, so I fall asleep a lot. I can't control it. It just happens. It ruins my fucking life. Please continue. Continue? Sure. Fine. Yes. I just fall asleep. At my kid's cello recital and suddenly I'm asleep and miss her solo. On the sky rail, then suddenly asleep and missing my stop and my mother's funeral. Walking down the stairs, then boom, asleep. Suddenly broke my arm and tumbling down the stairs. Oh, and let's not forget, trying my best to keep my job while suddenly I fall asleep and lean on the mining machinery, accidentally ejecting a store of mining explosives and injuring 17 people, one of whom is in a fucking coma. I think I'm done continuing. I had heard about that accident. The cave-in caused several people to be stuck in a mine for hours, and without quick medical attention, one of the miners slipped into a coma. No one died, but it changed a lot of people's lives. Maybe our study could as well. I started the last file. Please don't mention your name or those of others during the recording. The section will keep those interviews blind and confidential. Now, please tell us about your sleep disorder experiences. Experiences? I don't really want to talk about it. Is there anything you'd like to share? The drugs for the study. They'll get rid of my problem. Well, the study aims to examine the effectiveness of the new drug. So, you weren't sure? I just, 
I no longer want to sleep. Please, there's too much in the dark. I will not go back. You do not want to go back to sleep. I just lay there in the dark, and it sits on my chest as I blink, otherwise immobile. Nothing works. My arms, my legs. It moves around in the dark, and it can torment and mock and smile. It is wicked. Foul. Have you had an official diagnosis of your condition? Doctor said somnophobia, sleeping fears, due to prolonged chronic sleep paralysis. I live in a world of waking nightmares, and now I fear trying to go back to sleep. I have somewhere I need to be. I removed my privacy hood and disconnected my data pad to charge. I am a lucky woman. I am healthy, my family too. I work hard for what I want and I aid in the betterment of Atreus. I am not afflicted with these disorders and I do not worry about their daily effect on my life. And now, I have the opportunity to help others. I called my mothers. Hello? Is everything okay, Tia? Is that Tia? Yes. How are you? How was that work meeting today? It went fine. Just a briefing on things to come. There is nothing I need, I just wanted to call and say hello. I will be increasingly busy and unreachable over the course of the study. Apprentices get the night shift. Oh, well, make sure you take care of yourself. Just because you work the night shift does not mean you should be skipping meals or anything like that. I will, no worries. We are so glad to hear you are doing well, but we are just about to head out the door for a community meetup. Call us tomorrow, or I guess after your first shift the next morning? We would love to hear from you. Will do. Love you both. We love you too. Love you. I ended the call with a smile and was not soon after wrapped up in bed. Lying in the dark, I mulled over the ill-content voices of the study volunteers in my head. I thought about my sleep schedule and how all tomorrow I would stay awake as a sentinel over those who needed help. With a stumbling few steps, I reached for my data pad across the room and opened up the long dossier. If I had to be up late tomorrow, I would try to stay up late and sleep tomorrow. I had plenty of reading to do. I made it to the sleep clinic early, and while Agrippa had not yet shown up, I set about organizing our space and prepping the mark reader for volunteer check-in. The sleep clinic took up an entire floor of the section's medical tower. It shined pristine white, the floor a solid, unmarred stream, lined with 200 doors down multiple hallways. Each sleep room was just large enough to fit a bed, a small mobile monitor tower, and a little bit of walking space. Each hexagonal room had a one-way mirror that let staff look in on their patients without letting in light or visuals to the otherwise restful patients. Having busied myself with preparation, it wasn't long until Agrippa walked in. Ready for the evening ahead, Agrippa? (laughs) As much as one can be. Did you already prepare everything? Everything I could do alone. I am a bit restless and excited. Happy to be out of the courses and into the real work, I guess. (laughs) You have an overabundance of positivity for the night shift, Tia. I will take anything I can get. They should be arriving soon for check-in. It might be a trickle or a flood. But if we have not checked everyone in within the hour, we need to send out notifications. Was it dark when you came in? There are no windows in the clinic. Hmm, getting there. Certainly so by the hour's end. Hello. Is this the section's sleep clinic? The first of many volunteers walked through the door. It turned into a rather consistent stream of people in the coming half hour. Ten minutes before Dr. Kwa was to arrive, we had checked in all but three volunteers. Everyone had been assigned a room, and overall, things went as efficiently as possible. Dr. Kwa arrived with two of the remaining volunteers. They will check you in for the study tonight. Tia, Agrippa. The final volunteer arrived with another beep through the door. With 100% attendance, everything was going well. Everyone checked in and settled down in their rooms. We announced over the intercom system that Dr. Kwa, Nurse Agrippa, and I would be coming into each room to administer the drug and begin the study soon. To skip a long and boring process, I can say that that is exactly what we did. It took over an hour for us to administer the gaseous drug via inhaler to each of the volunteers and return to the monitoring station. 
and as my butt hit the chair, I felt the natural pull of a satisfactory night's sleep pull at me, slightly before Agrippa handed me a mug of steaming sweetened caffeine. <sighs> Ready for a long night? With a mug this large? Absolutely. Dr. Kwa will be back soon. Did she leave? Yes, after we were done administering the drugs. Oh, sorry. I swear I will be back to full attention once I down this drink. Hmm, not a problem. She just went to check some correspondence, but she has access to the clinic video feed, so she knows what's going on. Which is, you know, not really a lot. And hopefully it will stay this way. A restful, solid night's sleep for all of them is just what we are hoping for. So, do you watch broadcasts? Binge is a more applicable term. That night went smoothly. Everyone, every single patient, slept through the night without issue. For the next three days, everything moved along smooth as the sky rail. Dr. Kwa showed up for two more nights to help administer the gaseous drug, after which Agrippa and I had a perfect understanding of how to do it ourselves. One morning, while we were disconnecting patients from the monitors, one woman began to cry. She hugged me several times over and thanked me over and over for giving her something she had seen as unobtainable for years. A restful night's sleep. Agrippa and I, unlike the other nurses in the study, have access to the patient's files to some extent, for safety purposes. We can't look up their names, but we know based off their intake number whether or not someone has a history of a sleep disorder. This keeps us in the dark about some things, but helps make sure we are prepared in case of an emergency or dire need. The woman who hugged me, who cried her thanks to me that morning, had suffered from insomnia most of her life. That morning, I called my mother's and then Corin. While still staying cryptic about my work, I explained how happy I was to be helping people, making a difference. I felt as though my years of hard work and studies were finally vindicated. They were happy for me. And so was I. One night, after everyone was checked in and asleep, Agrippa and I were discussing childhood tales over our fifth mug of caffeine when an indicator sounded. Agrippa. Agrippa, look. Hmm. I'll bring up the file on the volunteer. Her heart rate is rising. Still safe. It says she is prone to panic attacks while sleeping due to sleep paralysis terrors. Her audio indicator is on. Add her signal to the feed. It is in the corner. I can see you. I can see you. You, you, dark, cannot make me go. I can see you. You cannot take me away to them. I will hide Turn from it them. down. I will hide the from file them. says hallucinations are a rather normal part them. of the condition. Oh, but look, the heart rate's still rising. Leave it on, just lower, and monitor her. But we have another signal. An audio signal. Can I tune it in? Go ahead. I'll keep an eye on the heart rate monitor. Well, that is certainly unusual. This file has no record of somniloquy. Wait, no, wrong file. He does have a history of somniloquy. Still creepy, though. Our woman with the night terrors just spiked her heart rate. Still within range for a non-threatening panic attack? Yes, so we just... let her be? Oh! Shit! Check the feed. I'll get the file. Ah! What's going on tonight? Suffers from night terrors and PTSD. If they don't wake up, just leave them alone and they'll go back to sleep. They stopped. Video feed looks fine. They just went back to sleep. And the woman with night terror's heart rate is returning to normal. Give me a moment. It can't get in. The red men are angry. That is still in. happening. The... Tia. Hmm? Please hand me that mug of caffeine. How about I get us both a refill? You might be my perfect partner. I get that a lot. I have been told on multiple occasions that I'm rather fetching, but sadly taken. Oh, shit. No offense, Matt, no, no, really. No, 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 look. Shit. Tia, get the sedative. There was no time to check the feed or files further. 
I trusted the call Agrippa made based off their observations, and we rushed out of the observation room. I clutched a small metal box only slightly larger than my data pad to my chest as we ran down the halls, a medical sedative in case of a violent reaction. With a beep of the mark scanner, the door opened, and the sound of crunching glass, snapping plastic, and barbaric impact echoed in the small room. There, a man certainly a foot taller than myself, thrashed in destructive rage against the mobile monitor. Agrippa sprang to action, being a formidable tower of a nurse, and gripped the man by the arms from behind. The patient still thrashed, even when pinned to the floor, his face rolling against small shards of glass. I moved in to inject him with the sedative, and as the drug hissed into his system, I noticed in his eyes that, while filled with rage and fear, the man's eyes were asleep and living in an unseen world. After getting the patient back into bed, we strapped him in. I cleared up the broken equipment and rolled in a new mobile monitor, while Agrippa withdrew the small glass shards from the man's face and applied what medical treatment was needed. I made a note of the administered drug on his file. While doing so, I got a notification on my hood from the main observation desk. Someone had disconnected from their monitor. Pausing in the hall, I beamed the surveillance video to my hood. <sighs> Give me a moment. What's... what is on the feed? A woman is standing up. She's looking at the mirror side of the one-way glass. She's disconnected from the monitor. What does the file say? Let me bring it up. I think we're done here. Yes, she may just be sleepwalking. Oh, no! What now? Follow me! Rushing from one patient's room to the next, we came to a halt before opening the door. The woman, whose long black hair framed her face in a ghastly visage, rolled her face against the glass with uninhibited force. Her eyes were glazed and unblinking as she rolled her face back and forth, distorting her features as blood streamed from her cracked nose to her now matted hair and stained medical gown. I scanned my mark and Agrippa rushed in, grabbing the woman and placing her back on the bed with the aid of restraints. I'll clean her up. I think you should get back to the observation room for now. Will do. Tonight has been utterly sour. And it was. But thankfully, after cleaning up the woman and setting her nose, we were able to calmly observe the rest of the night without further incident. Many of the volunteers stirred in their sleep. Some awoke and went back to sleep, but otherwise the night was calm. Wired from adrenaline and kept in fine company, we were wide awake for the remainder of the night and sent a report off to Dr. Qua to review in the morning. As the sun rose a few hours later, I ached for my comfortable bed. The sky rail ride home was a blur, and as I rolled into my covers, my eyes slid closed with a before unknown ease. Citizens, I regret to inform you that we have exceeded our allotted time for the evening. Please tune in in two weeks for the shocking season finale of Tales from the Tower Deep in Sleep. <laughs>